Sure. So, cut on our monologue. That was a very rousing discussion, and I loved that. So now, let's move on to our uh, educational segment. Buddy, play my intro! Hat. No, that long. And we're back with the hap. I love that. I love that intro. I love that intro. I'm getting better at editing. That's gold, Pony Boy. Oh, I hope I remember yes! it for next week now. Hmm? I hope I remember it for next week now. Yeah. Uh, yes, my friends, it is time once again for our educational segment of the show, because if you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. Hey, everybody. Everybody's a fan of this podcast, even the ones that have never heard of our show. But only the real fans, the true hardcore fans who have been with us since day one, would know uh, the two main facts about the both of us. Two absolutely really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, America's hottest will they or won't they couple, Bunny and Mei Lin. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that you are, and this is true, you are a pioneer in the new science called autotransulthopia. Now tell us, Bunny, what exactly is the science of autotransulthopia? Uh, well, it's it's it, it, it's an honorary doctorate um, from a fan based horror university uh and i study the around the foundations of dracula's castle there is mold and mildew i do the mildew nice so you know it's kind of nice fancy name but that's what it comes down to you know it's it's a horror university that gives you the honorary doctorate. The name of the university is the University of... <laughs> so, it's a, it's a good university. It's a good school yeah. if you can get in. Yeah. It's a good school. I've been yelling like that randomly when I'm driving the kids somewhere. I'm not <laughs> sure why, but I'm just driving and it's like, oh man, this, we're going to have so much fun going to Jaden's and swimming. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I've just been, I've, I've been excited. I've been excited. Yeah. I'm performing again. I've been excited. Yeah. 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 And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So this is the part of the podcast where I get a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know that well, and sort of reword it via my own unique storytelling style. And that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of historic approximations, or as we like to call it. <laughs> now give me some dramatic music, honey. Dun, 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 dun. And to be clear, HAP is spelled capital H, capital A, small p. That small p is the centerpiece of the entire podcast, the entire bit, the entire yeah. show. We love P here on the show. We love P uh -huh. at the Pulp on Film Podcast. Uh, anyways, um, this long-running segment, I should mention this, this long-running segment used to be called Steve's Historic Approximations, or Shap, as I liked to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wanted me to or not. But a dead name is dead for a reason, and so we are moving on. So, what is happening on Hap this week? I am so excited. This is not a long Shap. This is a short Shap. But this is one that I think that a lot of people don't know, and I am shocked by this. This is, this week, we will be discussing the 100% absolutely true story of how America's 
first superhero, first ever superhero, directly led to the highest grossing animated movie of all time. Okay. I really should have done this, Shab, uh, in our last episode where we actually discussed the highest grossing animated movie of all time. Yeah. But, uh, peaches, 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 peaches. But, um, this is a fascinating story. A fascinating story featuring people that, uh, that everybody knows, but that pe people do not know this story. I am shocked by this. So, here's the story. The year is 1980. Okay. And there, there's a small time company in Japan called, uh, uh, what are they called? Nintendo. Nin Nintendo. Okay. Nintendo. And Nintendo is wanting to get in to the arcade video game market, which was currently ruled by what game, Bunny? When Nintendo came out. No, uh, if the year is 1980 and Nintendo wants to dominate the video game market, but in the year 1980, one game reigns supreme, and that game is... I'm going to guess we're going with Donkey Kong? No, Pac-Man! Oh, Pac-Man, okay. Pac-Man fever! Oh, yeah. Swept the nation. Millions dead. We, the CDC we went, we went was like, so wear masks when you go into the time. arcade. It was difficult. So many people got Pac-Man fever that the CDC said that you have to be six feet apart from the arcade machine while you're playing it. <laughs> you try being six feet away from a video game while playing it. It's difficult. Yeah. It's hard. You're using sticks of bamboo. Gee, thought Nintendo. Uh, how can we dethrone Pac-Man? Uh, so Nintendo's president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, gave Project, I don't know, dethrone the Pac to a noob. He's like, okay, this is going to be difficult. What if it fails? I don't want to give this to our best guy. Because if it fails, then their career is destroyed. So you know what? When it comes to creating a video game to destroy Pac-Man, we're going to give it to some somebody who's green, wet behind the ears, a noob, a newbie, the new kid, never designed a video game in his life, brand new employee. Uh, hey, what's your name? Oh, my name is Shigeru Miyamoto. Hey, Shigeru. Shiggy. <laughs> Which is probably what his friends called him. Hey, Shiggy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, you, you never created a video game in your life. But you, you've you somehow made it to the big time, kid. <laughs> Don't be a bum! <laughs> I'm working on Pac-Man. My eyes don't work. You gotta cut me. You gotta cut me. <laughs> in between watching Rocky and watching Rocky 2, my wife comes up to me and she's like, so, honey, how do you like in the movies? And I'm like, Hey, yo, Natasha! How about after this, we go to the zoo, huh? And, and she hates it. <laughs> she hates it. But I really just want to be doing a Rocky voice 24-7. So, hey, Shiggy, come here. Y you hit the big time. Uh, make a video game to beat Pac-Man. <laughs> that should be easy for you. Ha! <laughs> A loser, huh? Can you believe it? Shigeru Miyamoto making a popular game? Yeah, right. In your dreams. That's that's uh, uh from Ed Wood. I'll get you next week. Yeah, right. In your dreams. I like when the movie shoot. Uh, so our boy Shiggy is thinking. Okay, G Willikers, my first game. Oh, okay then. How can I beat? Pac-Man, how can I do this? So he's thinking, and he's like, okay. Uh, kids primarily play arcade games. I should think like a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, 
okay. And suddenly he has an idea. Because when he was a kid, he loved a hero. A superhero. So this is what we'll do. I can make a game about this hero. We'll buy the rights. I'll make a game around it. So, Bonnie, I've got a few questions for you. Quiz time! Pop quiz! quiz. Hot Okay. What super... What super did Shiggy and Nintendo want to buy the rights to? Do, 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 do. Would that be Donkey Kong? I don't know. Is Donkey Kong a superhero, buddy? Oh, a superhero. What superhero did Shiggy and Miyamoto want to buy the rights to to make a video game? This is a difficult one. Yeah, I think I've heard it, though. I don't remember. Um, I think I've heard it, okay. though. Okay. They wanted to buy the rights to... Friggin' Popeye! Yes! Oftentimes considered... Oftentimes considered to be the first ever superhero. Popeye's creation beat the creation of Superman by almost a decade. Yeah. Ten minute warning. And so, yeah, I guess he's a super. Okay, I guess technically he's a superhero. You know, he's a normal guy with a speech impediment, possibly due to having a stroke, and uh, he gets powers and beats up bad guys, or usually the same two bad guys over and over again. Um, a few more questions, Bunny. How does Popeye get his power? This is an easy one. Spinach. Hard, easy, hard. Yes, yes. Spinach. Popeye eats spinach. Popeye gets stronger. But Popeye was introduced in 1929, but he didn't get his power from spinach until 1931. Question. Before spinach. How did Popeye get his strength? If you can get this, you win the biggest no prize in the world. This is a hard one. I am shocked by this. Shocked. Uh, I'm going to take a guess and say oil. Oil? Oil. Well, yeah. By going down on olive oil. Wow, a uh, bold well, choice. That is one way. Uh, this is true. I looked this up, and I looked it up again, and I looked it up again, again, and I looked it up again, again, again. This is absolutely true. Before Popeye gained his power from spinach, he got his power from rubbing the head of Bernice the Wiffle Hen. Well, how about North that? Island speaks volumes, buddy. Why didn't they put that in the Robin Williams movie? <laughs> it's like, eh, I'm Popeye. I get my power from Robin a cock. <laughs> but that's true. That is 100% true. So our boy Shiggy grew up loving Popeye. Absolutely loving Popeye. The first superhero. So uh, he sets to work making a big Popeye video game. I think I could finish it before this seven minutes and 15 seconds are up. Okay. okay. He sets to work making a big time Popeye video game. He's watching a bunch of old Popeye cartoons. Some color ones, some black and white ones, some ones from the 60s, the 50s, the 40s. He's watching a bunch of them. He stumbles upon a really old black and white cartoon. It's from 1934, and it's called A Dream Walking. And in it, Olive Oil falls asleep and starts to sleepwalk. And she sleepwalks out of her apartment and is walking 
uh, through the, uh, the top buildings and on the tops of buildings and through construction sites. And both Popeye and Bluto say, I'm going to rescue her. I'm going to wake her up and save her. So they're fighting each other to try and wake up Olive Oil. Meanwhile, she's still walking all over the place, all these dangerous things on top of a building. Next thing you know, she's walking up the scaffolding of a construction site. This is going to sound familiar soon. And so Shiggy's like, hey, this is a great cartoon. What a great setting for a video game. Okay, so here it is. Bluto is the bad guy, of course. He's Popeye's bad guy. He's big. He's giant. He's ape-like. So uh, he's an, a big, giant, ape-like man. He'll be... He, he kidnaps Olive in his big, meaty, ape-like arms and has her on the top of a construction site, just like this one cartoon. And so uh, Bluto's on top of a construction site. He's got olive oil, and of course, you're the hero. You're Popeye. You gotta save her. You gotta go up the construction site. But what's Bluto doing? He's gotta. He's gonna be throwing things like I don't know, wrenches, penises, poop. Thank you, Eleanor. Good one. <laughs> poop. Cats. Uh, barrels. I don't know. Bears. Bowls. Testicles. And uh, there you go. Boom. There's a game for you. Sound familiar, Bunny? Yes, it does. That sounds our, very familiar. <laughs> our boy Shiggy created the perfect video game. But there was a problem, and the problem was King Feature Syndicates did not give Nintendo the rights to Popeye. So our boy Shiggy is all like, damn it. I wanted to make a Popeye video game, but they won't give us the rights. Well, fuck it. We'll fictionalize it. Yeah. It's not Christine Jorgensen. It's Glenn or Glenda. So, uh, fuck it. We'll turn Bluto into, I don't know, an ape, a big ape, a King Kong, but not King Kong because of rights. And uh, we'll make Popeye into, I don't know, um, hop guy. Jump person jump man fine whatever and because nintendo could not get the rights to popeye we got donkey kong starring a character named jump man who would later become frigging mario so when you watch the animated super mario brothers movie now the highest grossing animated movie of all time say a quick thank you to poop deck Pappy's baby boy. <laughs> Popeye the friggin' sailor man. Because if it wasn't for Popeye, we would not have Mari. We would not have Luigi. We would not have Jack Black singing peaches, 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 peaches. Popeye gave birth to Mario. <laughs> Drops Mike Toad 2. Toad 2. Toto too, too, but this is a true story. People don't know this. Yeah. This is not a widely known story. Eventually, King knew... Features would go. Damn it! Look at how good this Donkey Kong game is selling. I think we kind of fucked up. Get Miyamoto on the phone, and Miyamoto said, "Oh, now you want me to make a Popeye video game? Well, guess what? I absolutely will. I love Popeye." So they created a arcade game called Popeye. Yeah. I loved it as a kid, and I found a website uh, that has an emulator built into the site, and if you have a quick computer, it doesn't take that long for games to load up. It's called ArcadeSpot.com, and they've got a pretty accurate recreation of the original Popeye game. I've been playing it for like the last week, and I love it. It's a yeah. great game. But it's no Donkey Kong. Yeah. But that is our hap this week. Popeye gave birth to freaking Mario and Luigi. Boom. Popeye's awesome. Mm -hmm. I am what I am. Popeye. I listen to that song from the Popeye movie so often. Yeah. Uh, what I am, what I am, what I am, and that, and 
what I am, and that's all that I am, because I am what I am. Uh, you got it? I think so, yeah. <laughs> love that. Love that song, and I love this hat. Next time you play a Mario game, next time you get on Nintendo, period. Next time you watch the Mario movie, or even the weird one with uh, Leguizamo, ah, oh, who can, who yeah. can have a piece of this anytime? <laughs> I love, um, I love John Leguizamo. Yeah. Oh, he was great in the menu. Okay, ah, uh, but that is it for. Historic approximations this week. Be sure and join us next time for more educationally uneducational fun with. And cut on that. Party! Yes. <laughs>